Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. A lot of you guys have been asking for a French link bookbinding tutorial, and I wanted to try and combine it with a Coptic stitch so I can add hardcovers like I usually do with that binding method. So I will show you in this video a Coptic French link stitch combo bookbinding method. Since I'm new to the French link stitch, I found a couple of really helpful videos on YouTube. One was inspiration for our Coptic Stitch French Combo by Crystal Chalice, and Christy Warren has a good link stitch tutorial on her channel, so I will put both of those videos in the description below. And feel free to adjust the measurements to this. I added my own twist to it, so if you want to change anything, go ahead, make your own variation. I'll include all of the supplies I use in the description below, and I will also go through my book setup, but if you want to just skip past that and get right to the binding, I will put the timestamps in the description below, and let's get into it. For the covers, I'll be using these canvas panels, which I painted with a chain pulling method that I recently did with you guys in a live stream. I'll link it up here if you want to check it out. And to make these more finished, I glued a piece of cardstock to the back of them, leaving a little bit of a border around the edge. These are 4 by 6 inch canvas panels, so I'm basing the size of my book off of that, but they do come in other sizes. For the pages, I made eight signatures of paper, and signatures are just four folded sheets stacked together. I trimmed all signatures to be an eighth of an inch smaller than the canvas panel. The page size is up to your preference, but I think this size fit better since the canvas wasn't even on all sides. To make the binding holes, I used one signature as a template and measured out three marks on each end, each of them were 3 4 inch apart, leaving a nice space in the middle that was enough space for a French link stitch. And feel free to add more binding holes or change the spacing depending on the size of your book. I added that signature on top of the rest, stacked them all evenly together, put a weight on top, and with a straight edge, go along each of those marks, drawing a line across all of the folded edges of the signatures. This is just one way to mark the signatures. If it feels easier for you, you can definitely measure out each individually or pierce through each one with a template. Now I'm going to pierce through each one of those signatures with an awl on those marks that I made and making sure to keep all of the signatures in the same order as I marked them. Now all the signatures are pierced and I'm going to take that top one again using it as a template to make the holes in the covers. I centered the signature with the cover and left about a half inch away from the binding side. This half inch is up to your preference. This is the measurement I went with, but it can totally be different if you prefer. I first made small marks with an awl and then picked up the canvas so I could pierce it all the way through, making sure there's enough space for the binding needle. And this canvas board is pretty tough, so it took me a while to pierce through all of them. I also try to press down any paper that comes out of the piercing process. If you have a screw punch, this will avoid that problem, but otherwise you can just press it down with a bone folder or an awl. Repeat those steps on the other cover, and now I'm going to prepare the thread for binding. Starting with about an arm's length of cotton craft thread, you can use any thread of your choice. I'm going to double it up so it's a bit thicker. Then pulling it across beeswax a couple of times, this will prevent fraying and tangling, which makes it a lot less frustrating to bind with. You can use a curved or straight binding needle, and if you prefer to use just a single line of thread, you can just pull it through like this and leave a tail, or if you want to double it up to make it thicker, pull it all the way through and tie both ends in a knot. And now we can get into the binding. If you're not familiar with Coptic stitch binding, I recommend checking out my past tutorial. I will link it up here and down below. It definitely helps to have some experience with this method before you tackle this new one. But even if you don't, I will take you through the Coptic stitch basics in this video. We're going to start with the back cover and the last signature, making sure to keep all the signatures in the same order that you pierce them. 
start from one end of the signature, it doesn't matter which end, and pull all the way through to the outside, loop around the cover, loop around that, and this is where having a curved binding needle helps. It really helps to get around those curves, but it can also be done with a straight needle. And return back into the signature. Now go through the next binding hole to the outside. Loop around the cover just like you did with the last one. and loop the thread behind that. If your thread tangles, just be patient and go slow and untangle it if you need to. Return to the inside of the signature and you're going to repeat that same step for all of the binding holes on this signature. When you reach the last one, loop behind as you usually would, and then you're going to return the needle into a new signature. Pull through the next binding hole to the outside. Then you're going to go underneath the previous signature stitch, looping around behind, making sure the needle doesn't go through any of the thread, it goes directly behind the stitch. And back into the new signature. Go through the next binding hole, and this is the part where I have the French link stitch. So I'm looping behind the previous stitch as I usually would, but this time I'm going to pull the thread all the way to the next stitch. And returning back to the new signature. For the next two holes, I'm repeating what I did for the Coptic stitch method. And when I reached the last hole, I'm going to loop around again and return the needle back through a new signature. And repeating that Coptic stitch method until I get to the middle French link portion. Going behind the previous stitch, and this time going behind that line of thread, and then going behind that next stitch and returning the needle back into the new signature. And just as before, the next two holes are the Coptic stitch method, looping around underneath and returning the needle back into a new signature. You will most likely run out of thread on this one, so you can just tie it off in a knot on the inside when you run out. You can tuck the end under if you want. in return with a newly threaded needle. To continue the French link stitch, this next row of thread is going to go behind the previous line of thread. And how I remember which area to go through is you want to go through the space that is right next to the stitch that you're working on. So in this case, it's toward the right side, and this will make more sense once we get further into the stitch. Then to return the needle to the next binding hole, I'm looping behind that next stitch like I did previously, and then returning back into the signature. Continue on through the rest of the signature with a regular Coptic stitch binding, adding on a new signature after you loop behind the previous stitch. When you get to the French link section, you want to go behind the previous row of thread. Keep in mind you want to go through the space that is right next to the stitch you're working on. 
and you'll see the French link pattern start to form as you bind this more because what gives it the pattern is the tension on the thread. So each row kind of pulls the previous one up. Since this is a combo with a Coptic stitch, it's slightly different than the traditional way of doing a French link stitch, but maybe I'll do a traditional version tutorial in the future. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments. When I reach the last signature, I'm going to bind on the cover along with it, just like I do with a usual Coptic stitch. For the first hole on the cover, I'm going to go through the cover first, loop behind the previous stitch, and then into the signature. For the next binding hole, I'm going to loop around the previous stitch first and then onto the cover. Looping behind the stitch I made and into the signature. Now for the French link section, it is a little complex. I hang in there and I'll try my best to explain how to attach it to the cover. I first went through the cover, behind the stitch below, and then looping between the cover and the last signature. And then looping around the stitch just below that. Now to continue the pattern of threading, go behind that row of thread just below it, and then behind the next stitch on the next binding hole. Go up through to the cover, keeping the thread toward the inside, and go behind that previous row of thread to continue that French link pattern. To finish off this side, I then went back into the previous binding hole on that last signature, returning back out on that side I was working on, and then to pull it all together going behind those two threads that you can see that don't look right, and pulling it back in with a loop. Loop around the stitch just below that, and then back into the signature. Now I know this seemed a little weird, but that was how I figured out how to continue this French link pattern with this combo. You are free to experiment to find a different version on how to do this, and if you do, let me know how it goes in the comments. Now the difficult part is over and I can continue stitching on the cover with a usual Coptic stitch method. Even though this was a little bit on the difficult side, it was a fun experiment to mix one of my favorite bookbinding methods, the Coptic stitch, with an introduction to the French link stitch. Oh. 
To be honest, it did take me a couple of tries, more than a couple of tries to uh, get the link stitch to work with the Coptic stitch in the middle. Like I'll show you right here. This is my first or second attempt. You can see my last row is just a straight line of thread and it doesn't look that bad, but obviously that's not correct if you're following the link pattern here. Don't feel frustrated if it takes you a few tries. Just try to have fun in the process. You can also make your own variation of this stitch. If you make your own version of this book, I would love to see your project pictures, so share those with me on my social links and add a hashtag CLemon and follow me while you're there. And in the comments below, let me know if there's any other bookbinding method that you want to try and I'll make a video about it. I'll give it my best attempt and see what I can do with it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell right next to it so you can be the first to get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to try more bookbinding videos, I think they're something great to do while you are at home. You can watch TV or watch a movie while you're doing it. I find it very therapeutic. Now I have a couple of playlists full of them. I will put them right here. And I will also link those in the description below. And I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.